Hey gang, how you doing? We're gonna go to chat. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put in this link, post that. And that is link to link to creative it's Soldier and War Song. Okay. All right. Put this over here. Keep this here. And put this here. We'll move this over a little bit. All right. There we go. We're just arranging my screen here where I can where I can see me. I can see all my stuff. And I want to see my people here. There's my people. Okay. Hey, we're back. Another uh, songwriting session where we're uh, analyzing songs about uh, soldiers in war. Seeing how this is a veteran's website. Uh, I will tell you now that if you want to um, request songs to be analyzed and looked at, you may do so in the chat. Uh, if you want to um, make a suggestion as to what you might want to learn about songwriting, I have in that same link, you will find many documents. One of the documents is um, my outline. You may look at that outline and... Uh, and decide, you know, uh, something, some topic that you might want to check out. Um, I'm, I'm making a lecture uh, on how to tell a good story. So that might be ready for Friday. So um, we've gone through the war songs and now um, we're going to do uh, some, today we're going to finish up the war uh, songs. We've been through many of them. Uh, today we're going to get into uh, the last of actual war songs, and then we might get into uh, songs about just about um, about PTSD, and then songs about peace. You know, I mean, war is fought so that eventually there will be peace. So that's another thing you can do with your uh, with your. A warrior energy, uh, you uh, you can convert it into uh, a, a, an idea that you might have about you know uh, we didn't waste our time you know that the world's a better place because we did our jobs and peace prevails in many parts of the world because of uh, the soldiers that have fought to keep peace. All right. So uh, we can uh, we can look at a couple of those songs too. All right. Um, I'm waiting to hear to see if we have any any visitors, anybody coming on board. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. Hi, uh, product. Coo, <laughs> product coo. <laughs> hey man, what's going on? Or hey girl, what's going on? Uh, Oh, all right, cool. Uh, I gotta turn this off because this is just a bunch of crap. I get a lot of crap in my phone. That's my gorgeous wife there. Oh, you see her? Oh, where, where you go? Uh, there we are. Oh, it's, that's Deanna Walker. Oh, no, it's not Deanna Walker. Anyway. She's a wonderful human being and funny and super smart and she's good looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Good. Pertico, Pertico, I'm glad you're good. Yeah, she is beautiful. Woo, you said that again. You said that again and again and again. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to go to my Word doc and I want to print out because I put I put some new documents in here. So I'm going to print a couple of things uh, while you're while you're going and um, finding that document that I had. I'm going to um, let's see what page is this. Let's look and see what page this is. This is. Does it tell you? Oh, it's thirteen of thirteen. Oh, I see. We didn't. We didn't get those other lyrics. Well, we'll we'll deal with that later. Um, okay, good. So we're gonna do this, and we'll do the current page. And we'll print that. I found a cool song uh, that deals with PTSD. Uh, that uh, Lady Gaga sang. Real name is Stephanie Germanata. Germanata. Stephanie Germanata. And, uh, yeah. Exactly. Really? That's her name? Yeah, that's her name. Um, See what we got here. Um, we can look at Talking Sailor Blues. We can look at Born in the USA. And we had Talking Sailor Blues was a request. Oh, we're out. We're almost out of ink. Woo! Got to go get some ink. Let me write that down because I'm a very forgetful human being. Let me write down. Get ink. I thought I had a blank sheet of paper over here somewhere. Ouch, ouch, stop it. Darn, I keep bumping into my guitar, scratching it. You all right? Okay. Let's see, I thought I had a spare. I do. Here's a scrap piece of paper right here. So we need ink. All right, that'll remind me of that. Okay. Uh, let's see now. It's about 10 after. We should have some people on board. Oh, yeah. Here's an, another viewer TV. What's up? Hey, you're what's up. Uh, glad to have you uh, uh, watching. We're going to go over a couple of songs today. Go to that link at the top of the chat, and you can find a bunch of songs there. It's a folder. And uh, in there, you'll find uh, Creative Vets, Soldier, and War songs. And uh, so you'll find... You'll find... Uh, you'll find uh, Oh, several songs in there. Um, we can do, uh, let's see, Talking Sailor Blues. Uh, that'll be interesting because that, you know, you may be, uh, you know, you might be. Oh, he has to go. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Protoku has to go. Well, man, I'm sorry to see that. Um, uh, at any rate, uh, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna do. You might be, for instance. Um, let's go. Let's go and look at this one. There we are. And then we'll go to that one. And then that one. Okay. I just had to line it up again. Um, you might be the kind of person that's, um, you know, that's a that, that's a rapper kind of like you you. You're good at, at that kind of thing, but uh, um, you don't really have a lot of um, melodies. So let's look at let's look at a talking blues uh, and see what what that what 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 that might be. All right. Yeah. See, there you are. Uh, another viewer TV. So we're gonna look at a talking blues. This is a folk song, so it's not exactly a a rap per se, but. Uh, we actually got two versions of it. Uh, we got one that's um, the original, Woody Guthrie. Let's listen to Woody's version for a minute, and then we'll listen to uh, 
Ramlin and Jack Elliott. Let's see what we got here. So I assume you've got the you've got the lyrics. Uh, I got the lyric right in front of me here. All right. And we're gonna make notes as this as this goes down. All right. Uh, all right. Good. All right. Let's let's hit it. Um, here's Woody Guthrie's version. singing the blues, heard the radio telling the news, said the big red army took a hundred towns and allies dropping them two-ton bombs, started hollering, yelling, dancing up and down like a bullfrog, doorbell rung and in come a man, I signed my name, I got a telegram. Said, if you want to take a vacation trip, got a dishwashing job on a Liberty ship. Woman a-crying, me a-flying, out the door and down the line. About two minutes or run ten blocks, I come to my ship down at the dock. Walked up the plank and I signed my name. Blowed that whistle and was gone again. Right on out and down the stream. Ships disperse, my eye could see. Woman away. Ship loaded down the TNT, all out across the rolling sea. Stood on the deck, watched the fishes swim. I was a praying them fish wasn't made out of tin. Sharks. Porpoises, jelly beans, rainbow trouts, mud cats, jugars, all over that water. This convoy is the biggest they ever did see. It stretches all the way out across the sea, and the ships blow the whistles and the ringer bells. Gonna blow them fascists all to hell. Win some freedom. Liberty, stuff like that. Okay, now let's listen to a little of Jack Elliott's version. See how that, see if that's any different. We'll start in the middle here. Rainbow trout, mud cats, cigars, all over that water. All the way out across the sea, the ship blow the whistle and rang the bell. Gonna blow them fascists all to hell. Wind some freedom, liberty, stuff like that. Walked to the tail, I stood on the stern, looking at the big brass screw blade turn. For an old recording, the audio quality is not that bad. That's right. Uh, exactly. Um, 
So what do we have here? We have we have a it's a pretty simple chord progression. You know, if you play a little guitar, uh, it's just a. It's just, uh, it's just one to the four to the five. I'm playing the key of E, so it's just E. Or you can do it. You can do it uh, even easier, possibly in the key of G. Yeah, and G is even better because you get the get that lower note than the than the G. You can't do that on the can't do that on the and the E because there is no lower note than E. So that's just a it's just G. See let me get it here see if you can see. It's kind of tricky showing you how to play play the guitar. But, uh, see if I can uh, figure it out here. It's a uh, you know, kind of blocked. So in G, disregard this. This uh, this. Uh, I'm tuned down a whole step. So that's actually this is actually G. This is real G. This is a very standard uh, talking blues lick. Uh, there's hundreds of talking blues songs. It just goes dug in the water. summary a little a counter statement uh, uh, I'm rapping I'm not napping slap my face so forth so you get that little one four the five back to the one and then at the end of it you stay on the one for a minute G, C, D, and G. C, D, I mean G, C, D like dog, G. Right? So you got all the licks there. Uh, you know how to do it. It's not difficult. It's real easy. And then you just, uh, and you notice that they paused a little bit. Uh, uh, in bed with a woman just sitting, just singing the blues, headed to, Heard the radio telling the news. Pause, pause, pause. Um, now, I've heard ones that don't pause, so you don't have to do that pause, right? Uh, but so what we have here is a story song, right? We got a story. And uh, where, where the story begins is where he's lying in bed with his sweetheart. And, uh, and then it ends up where he's actually on a ship going out to sea. Uh, but what we find out in the end is that it's not a warship. It's a merchant marine ship. Which is all very interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah. So um, it's a set. It's a set of um, in bed with a woman just singing the blues. Heard the radio telling the news. So all these are 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 um, symmetrical couplets. A A B B, and then an answer. Um, the answer was. Uh, Started hollering, yelling, dancing up, dancing up and down, 
like a bullfrog. So there's no rhyme or reason in that that last that last line doesn't rhyme with anything, right? But we go blues news. Uh, Tons and bombs, right? Uh, that big red army took a hundred of a hundred towns and allied dropping them two ton bombs. Yeah, okay, so towns and bombs rhymes. It's a, that's a soft rhyme. We've talked about soft rhyme before. Uh, that's, a, that's a soft vowel rhyme as well as a regular uh, consonant rhyme. Uh, towns and bombs is not bombs it's bombs towns and bombs so it's a it's a it's a nice uh light um what we call light rhyme or or a soft rhyme on that one and then the next one we have man telegram notice telegram is three syllables but there's an accent still on the last syllable telegram and that's what i call um syllabic contrast which is very cool so when i say doorbell ring and a doorbell ring and in come a man now the expectation there is that we're going to have another can or stand or fan that we're going to look for a single syllable word to rhyme with with man but instead a three syllable word telegram which is a kind of nice little surprise right and we love, we've talked about this, we love those surprises, right? Little surprises, little happy surprises, right? Yeah, telegram, right. And Graham has the accent on it, on the, just like man does, come a man, which is the accent on man. That's a, we call that a um, masculine ending. When the last syllable has a stress on it, that is a masculine ending. If the last syllable is unstressed, um, like, um, let's see, what's a word in here that's unstressed? Uh, doorbell. It's not doorbell. It's doorbell, right? So door is the stress and bell is unstressed. So if we went down, you know, a man come in, a man come up, a man, a man come up my walk, ring him a doorbell. You hear how it goes? You hear how that bell just kind of lingers out there? Uh, Feminine endings, uh, unstressed syllables on, at the end, feminine endings want to desperately resolve on the next line. They want to resolve to masculine, right? So, da 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 doorbell, da 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 all to hell, right? Yeah. Uh, so that would, be, that would be what your ear is expecting to hear. Um, if you keep the feminine endings going, you keep the tension going because the ear wants it to resolve to a masculine ending where there's a stress on the last syllable. And when it keeps going with the stress on the second to the last syllable, leaving that little dangly unstressed syllable at the end, that just keeps creating tension. So that's a way for you as a songwriter to keep tension going. You can just create feminine endings uh, as long as you can get away with it and you keep doing that and the tension will keep building and building. And then at the very end of the of the section that you're writing, you could finally resolve it with a masculine ending, right? Uh, that's what uh, often does happen uh, is a, a bunch of feminines and then boom, finally at the end, masculine, right? Um, in this case, all these are masculine endings, so we won't worry about that. Um, but we have just a story on, on uh, um, he first talks about uh, he's in bed. Then uh, this big army took 100 towns. Uh, allied, uh, allies dropped uh, the two-ton bombs, started hollering, yelling, dancing around. So he's feeling pretty happy about the allies dropping bombs, right? Now that's, you know, kind of... Um, is the word irony? I don't know. In other words, it's it's um, he's making statements that he doesn't necessarily believe, but uh, you know that he's happy that thousands of people are dying, but uh, nonetheless, you know we're winning the war, so he's happy about that. But uh, uh, it could be a little sarcasm, right? Um, uh,
little sarcastic remark. Um, so now, uh, doorbell rang an incoming man. I signed my name, got, I got a telegram, um, said, if you want to take a vacation trip, got a dishwashing job on a Liberty ship. Uh, now, a Liberty ship, I believe, and you can look this up if you want to, one of you guys out there, gals, um, <clears throat> you can see, um, I think a Liberty ship was an, a non-military ship that was transporting um, goods to the, uh, to the Allies overseas in Europe, and also probably in, uh, in the Pacific as well during World War II. Uh, so that was what a Liberty ship was. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, woman crying. Uh, Mia flying out the door and down and down the line. So he's talking about, uh, you know, he's going to go sign up. About two minutes, I, I run ten blocks. I come to my ship down at the dock. Um, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, World War II cargo vessels. Yeah, all right. Thanks. Um, and so I, I love this. I love this. This little format is real easy to write. Right, um, low cost ships. Yeah, they were probably uh, you know junk heaps because they knew that there was a very good possibility that they were going to get torpedoed. Oops. So they might have used you know the trashy ships just just in case, right? Um, yeah. Uh, so this guy's a merchant mariner. And I believe Woody Guthrie actually was in the Merchant Marines. You can also look that one up. But I'm pretty sure he, he did join the Mer Merchant Marines. It sounds familiar to me that he, he did that before he became a, a traveling singer. Um, a uh, minstrel of sorts. Um, so all we're doing is we're looking at the progression. You know, he, he's in bed. Guy comes. He gets a telegram. He signs up. He goes down to the dock. Uh, uh, blown that whistle was gone again. Uh, right on out, uh, down, down the steam ships as far as my eye could see. Yep, so it, it gives you this picture of there's this huge uh, amount of vessels in the, uh, in the harbor. And then uh, ships loaded down with TNT. Oh my gosh, uh, all out across the rolling sea, stood in the dark, watched the, f the fish swim. I was praying that this fish wasn't made of tin. Now that's pretty funny, uh, right? That is pretty darn funny. So we've got, uh, it's not unusual for these uh, songs to be ironic, to be sarcastic, um, and also to be funny, right? That's that's one of the, uh, <clears throat> one of the, characteristics of a, of a talking blues uh, and then it rolls and rolls and it just keeps on ba -da 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 -da, ba -da 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 -da. so it's very it's a it's what I would call a groove song you get in this groove and uh, and you just kind of get hypnotized by the groove of the you know the dum, you know this 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 thing you know. So it's very, very, uh, very, very hypnotic in its repetition, right? Uh, and let's see what else it does here. Uh, I, I love the, 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 the humor of, uh, I hope the fish was made out of tin. And then they, and then of course, you know, for more humor, they, they mentioned sharks, porpoises, jelly beans. Well, you, were th you thought he was going to say jellyfish, but instead he said jelly, jelly bish, uh, jelly, jelly bitch, Ooh. jelly fit, uh, jelly beans. Uh, rainbow trout, uh, you know, all these mud cats, uh, juggers, I don't know what that is, uh, all, all over them waters. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it is funny. Uh, and then we talk about the size of the, uh, we, we talk about the size of it. Uh, it's the biggest you've ever seen, stretches out across the sea, and the ship's blowing whistles. The ringing and bells are uh, going to blow them fascists all to hell. Now, there's that fascist thing. All to hell. That's so funny. Uh, 
which of course Hitler was a fascist. So that's uh, it's funny we don't you don't hear that word as much anymore. Uh, well, except now these protests, uh, uh, you're hearing things, you know, you're hearing the word fascist now because of, uh, you know, we're living in a very uh, interesting time right now. The last last three or four months have been very, very interesting. And I do believe uh, that it's going to go down in the history books. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called. It doesn't have a name yet, but I guarantee you that it will have a name and uh, it will be in the history books, people will be studying this uh, virus and then these protests, uh, you know, in the middle of the virus, you know. So uh, it's, a, it's a wild time. It's a wild time. Uh, see what we got here. Uh, so the speaker here is a common man. Well, he is a common man. Exactly. Uh, yep, yep. Or a guy who buys. Exactly. See, now you're, you're onto it. You're onto it exactly. You know, Woody Guthrie is a real smart guy, and he was an anti-war guy. So he knew he's acting like and he's playing the part of a guy that's kind of dumb. But he's not dumb at all. And that's what I meant about sarcastic and ironic. And um, and uh, what's the word when you... Um, it's not protest, but... Uh, um, um, there's a word when you're writing a song that's uh, that's about kind of anti-war stuff. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, at any rate, uh, facet, facious, huh, facious, huh, interesting, uh, facetious, yeah, yeah. A facetious a satire that's the words I'm looking for um, satire they're doing a satire uh, so he's doing a satire and everybody that's listening to him sing this thing they all know that you know that you know he had a reputation uh, you know of being a Of being an anti-war guy, so they knew that you know. But I think he actually did do this. I think he actually did get on the, get on ships and go. Uh, I'm just one of a merchant crew. Uh, let's see. He talks about the and he also talks about um, that he's in the. Uh, he, I'm in the USA and the CIO. The, the CIO, you know, is the big big union, uh, and then a union called the NMA. That's Merchant Marines. National Merchant Marines Union, probably, right? That would be my guess. Uh, uh, and then that's, par that's part of the CIO, not the CIA, CIO, right? And then uh, fighting out here in the waters to win some freedom on the land. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's what's going on there. So if you've got a story and you can't, uh, you know, you can't sing very well, you can uh, you can choose this talking blues method, right? Uh, it might be cool to get an actual rap song, uh, uh, an actual rap song. Is anybody out there into into real actual rap? Um, we might be able to to you know uh, spontaneously on the spot go for uh, you know go for a song about uh, about war soldiers. Uh, let me know over here in the rap section, if anybody, in the chat section, if anybody wants to uh, to get into that, we could we could do that. Uh, until then, let's move on to another um, to another song. Um, a song I really love, called "Born in the USA." Now this song, uh, and again, this is. Um, This song is loaded with satire, right? Absolutely loaded with satire. So let's check it out. Born in the USA. Um, let's see what we got here.
That's the whole song. Woo. What a powerful song. Uh, I remember this song very well when it came out. You know, one of one of uh, the boss's best albums, one of many of his best albums, uh, born in the USA. Um, first of all, let's talk about the music for a minute. Um, something's going on here. I mean, whoa, dude. Now, I think we can safely say that the boss knows how to write a song, right? I mean, am I right? He's written plenty of really great songs in the past. So what's the deal with the same melody over and over and over and over again? Whatever key that's in. Oh, it's in the key of... It's in the key of B. It's like a, and my trusty three string capo. You seen this before? A little three string capo. It goes up over, uh, goes up over the, uh, the A string, the D string, and the G string. So you get a. I wonder what it would sound like if I dropped it down here. So I dropped it even lower. I, I dropped, I, I put it here. And I, I'm two, two frets away, so I'm playing the key of G. I'm, I'm pretending like this is kind of where my capo is. And I put this capo down one, one, two, three, four spaces instead of just two. So this is the four. There's the one the four instead of the five because you notice I haven't changed the tuning so I can still play a G my guitar is a little out of tune but you got the idea right and I'm playing a G I have to swing around this way like this playing a G now I'm playing a C and I'm playing the rock and roll G and the rock and roll C. The rock and roll G is when you bar both of these strings here, the B and the E, so you get a That's a very rock and roll G. There's the C. And I notice I didn't move that. I just kept that the same. But now I've got this because of this because of this I'm all the way down to the 4. And then I go
I can do that little extra. Anyway, that's just a little little bit of little lesson in three string. Uh, I normally don't put it here. I normally put it on the five here so that you play. This one, the, the 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 D. That's playing the five now. But if I move it down two, now it's playing the now it's playing the four. sneaky tricks that we can uh, we can play with right um, this song the song only has two chords the one and the four one and the four and what's what's uh, yes the backbeat is relentless absolutely doom bad doom bad Bad, do bad, do bad. So it's the two and the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, four. Yeah, um, bad, do bad. It's a snare hits on the two and the four. Uh, and so it's relentless. Uh, it's 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 heart palpitating, and he just goes back and forth from the one to the four. Now, what's so interesting about this one four? Is it, first of all, it's something that Bruce Springsteen uses a lot, and I'll tell you why. Because the one and the four have a relationship like a teenage son has with his father, right? Yeah, they're related, but they don't get along all the time in a fantastic, fabulous way. Yeah, the, the, the four is a little rebellious, you know? If we play... If we play um, here, let's take uh, let's take all these off here. Let's see if we can get back in into some kind of tuning here. That's not too bad. So listen to this relationship. Oh, thank you, honey bunny. Welcome. That's my gorgeous bride right there. That's her. We was just talking about you. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. See, now I can lower this down a little bit and you can see a little bit of my guitar. Um, so I'm playing uh, I'm playing the, the G G to the D. Notice that D wants to resolve back to the G, right? But listen to that four. There's tension between the one and the four, whereas there's no ten tension between the one and the five. No tension. Because that five wants you to go to the one, and sure enough, you go back to the one. So you can hear it, especially when I play the, the five, the, the seven. That's D seventh. to resolve but 
and I'm playing the rock and roll G, so you never hear that. So you get the you get the difference. It's amazing uh, how you can use that to your advantage. Uh, the five and the one are very friendly. It's like the mom and the dad, and then uh, and then the four is the ratty teenage. It could be a girl, could be a guy. Doesn't make no difference. What does make a difference is this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, he is definitely screaming the hook. That is another, the texture of his voice, absolutely. Uh, that is a good comment and wisely spoken. Um, absolutely, part of, part of the tension of this is going from the one to the five, one to the four, one, four, one, four, and then singing the same uh, melody over the different chords gives it more tension. Let's see how many harmonic notes there are. Da, 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 da. So yeah, see so watch this. There's the one, three, five, one, or the eight. It's an octave. That's the nine. So we have born, which fits that chord. That's a harmonic chord. And then we go born. Ah, that's a nine. So it's a it's an it's it's a it's a dissonant. It's not inharmonic. But it's a dissonant note. It makes the nine. See, there's the normal C. And you get that effect. You get that effect playing the rock and roll. Go to the C. Notice I didn't change. The same, same. I can also go to the E minor. I can go to A. There's lots of chords I can play with that. suspended a suspended one that's the one so one five one three four it's a sp suspended four isn't it yeah so it's a it's a five with a suspended four isn't that cool Yes, we saw that. Yep, yeah, on the on the Lone Star piece, exactly. So you can see how he's using um, dissonant notes and inharmonic tones to cause massive amounts of tension, right? Da 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 da, da and then boom da 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 da. da. <clears throat> so you get dissonance and inharmonic resolving back to the, you know, where everything's harmon harmonizing, harmonic. Then dissonant back to harmonic. Dissonant, so tension to release, tension to release. And the fact that it repeats the same 
melody over and over and over. What happens there? It's the same thing. Massive, super massive amounts of tension on that, right? Just incredible amounts of tension, right? So um, that's why this song is so effective because, again, uh, it's a story song. And it, there's a lot of descriptions in this song, right? A lot of descriptions. Um, he says, born down in dead man's town. Uh, the first kick I took was when I hit the ground. So he took, so he, he uh, end up like a dog that's been beat too much to uh, spend half your life just covering up. So he was very much abused when he was a child. I mean, and the way he poetically st uh, stressed that you notice he didn't, he didn't directly say my dad beat me. Uh, could have been mom, but more than likely it was the dad. Um, so born dead man's town, first kick I took was when I hit the ground. I end up like a dog that's been beat too much. Um, till you spend half your life just covering up, right? So in other words, he's got wicked PTSD, right? Uh, but that's brilliantly written because what's cool about it is it's indirectly talking about something that's very painful. Um, like a dog, so he's using a metaphor, he's using a symbol of the dog. He says, like a dog. So that's actually a, a simile. Uh, like a dog that's been beat too much. He didn't say, I was beat too much. He says, like a dog that's beat too much. Till you spend half your life just covering up. Notice again, you know, he doesn't say directly what's going on, but I mean it's pretty clear that he's he's saying, you know, he's trying to admit, covering it up that he that nothing ever happened. So right away you've got a really intense, um, intense uh, image of what it's like to be a common man in um, in America. He doesn't say what race he is either, so he leaves it open. You could be a white man, you could be a black man, you could be a brown man, you could be a yellow man, you could be a red man. It wouldn't make any difference. Uh, you know, if you've had a rough childhood, you've had a rough childhood. Um, and then he just goes right into this born in the USA. I was born in the USA, born in the USA. What's it What's that all that about? What's cool? It's repetition, 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 right? Doesn't changes melody whatsoever um still that's in the key of a uh the next thing we hear is uh, uh got got in a little hometown jam so they put a rifle in my hand again beautifully written very subtle i call this high impact writing where a few words say a huge amount of information. So as he gets older and time is passing, uh, uh, we find out that he gets in a jam in his hometown. So they put a rifle in my hand. Uh, again, using that object, rifle, uh, which is clearly, you know, like he's, he's going into the army. They didn't put him in the police force. No. They put him in a, uh, and then they sent me off to a foreign land. Notice he didn't say Vietnam. Isn't that interesting? He saves Vietnam for later. I love that, 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 that saving the detail for later in the song. It's very much like if I was writing a song about my father, I might say something like, um, you know, uh, I saw the old man sitting on the front porch. Watching the traffic go by. I just said old man, right? And then later down the line in the song, I can mention, oh, it's my dad, you know? And daddy always said to me, you gotta grow up real fast. My pappy always knew the way to get your song to last, get it to last. Get it to last. That was a flat seven. That's an F. 
funky, funky. Pulling on that, all right. Again, it's a suspended note. Uh, See, there's the next note that harmonizes. It's down there. Five. Oh, it's a nine. Suspended nine. See, we love those little suspended notes, don't we? Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we sing, we sing in harmonic tones against the chord, and it creates tension that you, of course, later resolve by singing a melody that's more in line with the chord, right? Perfect. All right, let's get back to the song. All right, so we got a very repetitious melody going against a one and a four which creates a massive amount of tension release, tension release, tension release, with the same melody, right? But as he keeps singing it, you're just going, oh my God, what the heck? It just keeps building. Hey, Master Two, uh, Mr. Two, good to have you back. Um, love to have you aboard. Uh, glad you could see. Have you, uh, did you just get on yet? You just came on. Good. All right. Um, glad to have you back. We're talking about Born in the USA. And uh, about how incredible the boss man is when he when it comes to writing a song, the man knows how to write a song. Because let's face it, he could have gone, you know, he could have gone, you know. could have changed it up you know why didn't he change it up it's because he wanted to just drive that monotony home absolutely the boss rules yo you know that's right uh, uh, and I imagine he's coming out with a new project here pretty quick with all this turmoil that's going on Bob Dylan's uh, getting ready to release drop an album he's gonna drop an album this Friday I believe and in that album, there is a 17-minute song about the about the assassination of JFK. But I've heard that song, and it's basically a song about American history. You know, he goes way back into you know into the annals. Is it annals? Annals of time. Annals of time. I think is a that might be a swear word. I'm not sure. Anyway, apologies to you folks that. I just insulted him. Didn't mean to do it. Total accident. Annals of time. Here we go. We got it right. You know, you make too many teenage uh, jokes about buttholes and you end up just, you can't remember what the actual word is. Uh, so here we are. So, um, he first opens by talking about who he is and where and how he grew up. So you, with your military experience, could write a song that does that exact same thing. You can start your song by saying who you are and how you were raised, right? And then you can make a statement about the overview of what you're trying to say and just repeat that one statement over and over and over. And that can be your chorus, right? And then you start giving um, examples of what you did when you were young. So we're still in the past, right? Um, but so he gets in trouble and then he's given a rifle because, you know, uh, I don't know if this exists anymore, but the, uh, there was a day 
when, oh, here, you want, you want my new look? Here's my new look. What do you think? These are reading glasses, but people say I look good in them, so I may get a pair. A little bit narrower, though. These are too wide. I might get them down in, uh, see, down in here. <laughs> it's hard to do bad things backwards. But um, with these glasses, I can see you. I can see clearly up here and down here. These little glasses, these cuties here, they only see down below. They're, they're um, you know, they're, they're gradual amplifiers. What do you call that, you know? Uh, at any rate, uh, Yeah, you have high hopes of when it comes out. That's right. Yep, Springsteen, uh, Springsteen's High Hopes. Yeah, that's a. You know, was that is that the album? Uh, let's see. We got. Uh, okay, Poindexter. All right. Um, good luck at IBM. All right. Okay. Um, not sure what that means, but that's all right. You guys are talking amongst yourselves. That's good. And I will say, guys, it could be girls. It's hard to know with these funny names. At any rate, uh, just trying to stay up with you all. Um, so now he's going to go to a foreign land. And I like the fact that he leaves that open, right? Um, he doesn't say Vietnam. He's, he's going to save that until a later time. Uh, and he does say yellow man. Oh, wow. I mean, that's that's... That's painful, right? That's painful. Um, but, you know, that's what the song's about. Then he goes, born in the USA. Come back home to the refinery. A hiring man said, son, if it were up to me, I went down to see my VA man. And he had said, don't you understand? Notice he never, he never finished the sentence, which I thought was very cool. He never finished it. He says, if it were up to me, I would hire you. But I'm not gonna hire you, you know. So it's like, oh, dang, I'm not. I don't, can't get a job, um, and it could be that he can't get a job, you know, because after the Vietnam conflict, there was a lot of anti-war protest stuff, and um, so it may be, you know, because you're a vet, uh, the boss won't let me hire you because you know we're protesting the war. Ah, right. So we get this massive amount of tension and then uh, went down to see my VA man. He said, son, don't you understand? Um, and then he says, don't you understand? What don't you understand? I had a brother at, uh, at Ki San fighting off the Viet Cong. They're still there. He's all gone. Um, ha he had a woman he loved in Saigon. I got a picture of him in his arm. So um, I guess the VA man is is expressing his pain. Uh, he's not helping him get a job, but he's expressing his own pain. Um, then down at the shadow of the penitentiary, uh, where he might have ended up, right, if he hadn't taken the rifle, uh, out by the gas fires of the refinery, I'm 10 years burning down the road nowhere to run and got nowhere to go so you get the sense that he's just trapped in this really la nasty job uh, after doing you know after sacrificing uh, for the American way of life you know in Vietnam uh, and maybe realizing it was a mistake maybe not but at any rate because uh, there was you know there was a big divide on that one um, it's just, it ends really, you know, in a very tragic note, doesn't it? So, you know, he's not afraid to to, uh, to get that cathartic energy out there. <clears throat> and uh, you, you all, you vets, you can do the same with your song. You can talk about how you grew up, talk about the, the situation that you got in to get you into the service. And it might have been that you volunteered. And, and I mean, we're in a volunteer army, so probably you did volunteer. Unless you got in trouble and they made you go, which does still happen. I'm pretty sure that still happens. Um, and then you can talk about, you know, uh, 
Well, it doesn't ever say. It, 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 what's interesting about this song, and I'm learning this along with you, this song doesn't even talk about his experience. He just talks about coming back home. Where? To America. Born in the USA. So he's staying on task, which I really love. That's really, that's incredible. Because he knew the song was born in the USA, so he didn't want to spend a whole lot of time overseas. He just talks about when he comes home, he gets treated like dog poop, right? And so, uh, so there he is, born in the USA. You know, and what he's saying is, hey, it's not always, a, a you know, uh, a cakewalk being born in America. You'd say America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Well, he was brave, but it uh, doesn't mean he's going to get a great job, right? So I, I just I just love that song. It's full of tension, full of angst, and a great storyline. Lots of information, lots of high-impact writing, a few words saying a lot, right? And that's a, it's good practice to try to do that, you know, like... Uh, like, you know, um, I work all day and into the night uh, just to keep the boss man from getting in a fight. Uh, um, months go by, they turn into years. Uh, just just pedaling, just, just putting all those bolts and nuts on the gears, right? Notice I... I took, um, like working in an auto factory, uh, I took just a piece of what I do, nuts and bolts and gears, and that represents, that personifies, that represents the industry, the auto industry. That's always fun to do, and it helps in the impact writing to, like, say, you know, uh, these arms will never hold another. The arms represent me. Right? Nuts and bolts and gears represent the auto industry. So it's always fun to try that, to do your representation parts and pieces, which represent a bigger piece, right? So uh, that's that's another little trick that we use in the, in the songwriting business, right? Um, yeah, really good. And uh, in that, in that uh, I don't remember, one, two, three, fourth verse, he talks about... Uh, they're still there and he's all gone. Do you get what happened there? Again, without saying he died, we know he died. He's still there. And they're all gone. Right? So we know if he's still there and they're all gone, we know he died over there. I actually had a friend return to Vietnam about five years ago and he took videos and pictures of his experience and he actually went to the exact same location where his base camp was and it's of course it's all very peaceful now and it's just it's just a it's it's pretty much overgrown of course completely overgrown uh, but it was a heck of a cathartic experience for him to talk to the Vietnamese people um, to make peace with them and to uh, and this is a song you could also write, is making peace with your past. Uh, yeah, hey, all right. Uh, let's see, what time is it? Yep, it's a quarter after. Uh, Timmy's come back. Thanks, thanks for coming aboard. Good to see you. Um, at any rate, um, those representation, a part representing a whole, is a lot of fun to, to write, uh, to stick one of those in there. Uh, I think we've covered this song pretty well. It's an A A B B, you know, refinery, me, man, understand, Kong, gone, Saigon. Uh, let's see. I had a woman he loved in Saigon. Uh, I got a picture of him in his arms, right? So Saigon and arms, right? Soft rhyme, but we love that soft rhyme, don't we? Don't we, fellow? Vets. Yeah, we do. And why do we love soft rhyme? Because it's unpredictable. I love to give little surprises, right? You know, we love little surprises in our songs. Uh, you know, going along and we can suddenly change the line rhythm. 
unexpectedly shorter, unexpectedly, unexpectedly shorter or unexpectedly longer, right? Yeah, we can do that. And um, we can do soft rhyming. Uh, any little unexpected thing, it's always good to keep that in mind, you young writers especially, rather than just staying to a strict formula. Boom, 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 boom. Think about breaking it up just a little bit. Remember, originality is nothing more than a series of tiny, tiny surprises, right? So it's always good to remember that. Tiny. That's the key word there. You don't want to overdo it, all right? Now, let's talk about, let's talk about PTSD, all right? We're going to go to a song, Lady Gaga, Till It Happens to You, right? And while I'm listening to the song, you can either get the lyric on this way up at the top of the chat. There's a link, and you can open uh, the Creative Vets. Um, did I even say what it was? Did I say? Um, yeah, I did. I did. Okay, good. You can open that link, and and uh, it will be the last song on the um, Soldiers in War songs. It's the last one. Um, so let's play this song. And if you don't want to bother with that, you can just go online and just literally just type in Till It Happens to You lyrics. And boom, it's right on the page. This uh, lyric link, I think it's called, or song link or whatever. They have now just put the lyric right on the front page. You don't even have to go to another website. You just boom, it's right there. Or it's lyric find or something like that. Lyric find, maybe it's called. So while we're listening to that, go get this lyric and let's, let's, let's discuss PTSD. You know, we've all, well, not all of us, but a lot of us have dealt with it in a certain degree or another, including myself. Let's just listen to this. Oh, wrong one, sorry. Here we go. Tell me it gets better, it gets better in time. You say I pull myself together, pull it together, you'll be fine. Tell me what the hell do you know? What do you know? Tell me how.
Wow. Wow. Woo. Pretty powerful. Now, this is a really, really interesting song. And one of the most interesting things about it is, and I bet you already know what I'm going to say, because you've been with me before. Um, what am I going to say? What What is it about this song that makes it unique, besides the topic itself? There's something about the form, the way it's going. Uh, hey, all right, thank you. Thank you. You're suspicious. <laughs> That's so funny. Thank you for the heart. Appreciate it. Um, uh, so what's going on here? What's going on here is a ton of repetition. And to, so to me, this is a great example of how you can build a whole song around just like four or five, six lines, right? I mean, look at all this repetition. The only place, um, yes, the verse just repeats, and every, I mean, everything repeats. Uh, look at this thing. It says, um, here, I'll give you, I'll, I'll show you the lyric, and then if you want to, it, you know, if you're show, if you're watching this later, if you're watching this later, you can pause and read the lyric. But uh, the lyric goes like this. It goes, uh, tell me it gets better. It gets better. There's your repeat. First one, right? Tell me that it gets better. It gets better in time. You say, pull yourself together, pull yourself together, you'll be fine. Bullshit. So, tell me, what the hell do you know? Repeat, what do you know? Tell me, how the hell could you know? Notice they just, let's see, how do you know, how could you know? They only changed one word. Very famous songwriters here, by the way. Uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, I should. I have to get that in there. But this is Lady Gaga and Diane Warren. <laughs> Diane Warren, one of the greatest songwriters of all time in the pop world. She's been writing hit songs for decades and decades. Uh, She's an amazing human being uh, and one of the most dedicated people to her art form than anyone I've ever heard of. I mean, I've heard stories about her just doing nothing but writing songs for days and days and weeks on end, just sitting at that piano and just writing. She writes, she used to write a lot by herself and uh, she didn't go out very much. She stayed at home. She lived. It. She lives in L.A. Of course, where else are you gonna live when you're doing pop music? Except maybe New York. Well, New York's not happening anymore. Could it happen again? Yeah, sure it could. But right now it's L.A. L.A. And there's another place also you could be at, and that's L.A. Yeah. So she lives there, and uh, the the stories that we hear is that she's so dedicated that she she pretty much just writes. She just nails herself to the piano bench and just works and works and works. But the result, the result is great, great songs that people remember for years and centuries. You know, some of my favorite songs are Diane Warren songs. That, uh, that song that, um, is it ACDC? Uh, or or uh, I'll think of it, uh, the band. Um, What's his name? You know the guy that looks like uh, the guy that looks like uh, Mick Jagger. Um, uh, what's the name of that band? He, he does the song uh, uh, "I Can't Sleep." Uh, uh, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I'll miss you, girl. And I don't want to miss a thing. What a great song! Oh God, I wish I wrote that song. Really, really good. And I use that song a lot in my rhyme scheme lecture because it's a lot of feminine endings. 
and uh, and then it finally gets into a masculine ending, which is which feels resolved. The feminine endings feel unresolved, so it's it's a very cool thing. Anyway, let's get into the song because I got to go here in a minute. Um, and, but the point I wanted to make is that um, there's so much repetition that you, as a vet, just starting out writing, you can do this. You can simply say. Um, Hmm. She was in a minor key, so we'll, we'll, we'll be in a minor key. E minor to C. It's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite progressions. Woke up and went out. Find a life for me Find a life for me Find a life for me And where And somebody cares Somebody cares I know somebody cares for me Somebody cares Yeah, somebody go into another detail, you know. Got myself a car, drove all over town, drove all over town, yeah. Got myself a car, drove all over town, drive all over, drove all over town, till I hit the ground now. Wish I could take a little, little trip, little vacation, little vacation. I could take a little vacation, vacation, but I'm looking for someone to love, yeah. No, somebody loves me. Somebody loves me, yeah, baby. I know somebody loves me, baby. Somebody loves me, and you know it's true. See what I mean? I mean, there's very few words. And I'm just making that song up off the top of my head. But so few words in that thing. I just repeated and repeated and repeated. And I kept coming up with some interesting little bit of, bit of chords and stuff. So this song here is a great example of that. The only time uh, I love, uh, let me bring up a few more things. Uh, she says, you tell me, uh, uh, you tell me, uh, uh, Hold your head up, hold your head up, and be strong, because uh, when you fall, you got to fall up. Uh, and then, and then, oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's in the chorus. Sorry. Um, till it happens to you, till it ha you don't know till it happens to you. It, it can't be real. No, it won't be real. Uh, won't know how it feels. And then on the second chorus, it goes, won't know how I feel. And I. And that specific I at the end of that second chorus really pounds it home, right? Uh, we know that other people are talking to her, but in the chorus, uh, it only goes, it feels, and then I feel, right? And then, uh, and then there's something very personal about that uh, going from it to I really, really um, brings that second chorus up a notch. Remember we talk about you want to keep your excitement and your interest and your storyline. You want to keep it moving. You want the arc of the story to go up and up and up and up. And then at the end, taper off just a little bit on the very, very end, right? But one way you can keep it going up is to say, you, you don't know how it feels. And then, and then instead of saying it, you might have a little leveling off there. But know how I feel keeps that interest going up, keeps the intensity rising, right? Little tricks, you know, again, being nonspecific at first to being specific in the end. Very, very cool, right? So they changed, the only place where it changes is till your world burns and crashes, till you're at the end 
the end of your rope till you're standing in my shoes. I don't want to hear from you, from you, from you, because you don't know. And no rhymes with rope. Also, the highest note in the song is because you don't know at the end of the bridge. You don't know. It's way, way up there, right? Nice place for it to be. Again, looking for that ascending thing, ascending up, up, and you don't know. Great place to keep the excitement going. And then what happens right after that high note? There's what we call a breakdown where all the instruments go away except maybe a little synthesizer and she sings real softly, you know, till it happens to you. You don't know how I feel, how I feel, oh, how I feel, all that repetition. But you see that wonderful, um, she's almost whispering it. So you, you just, you almost want to just burst into tears right there and then, right? So beautiful uh, use of dynamics, right? And a use of a different rhyme scheme suddenly on the bridge to your word crashes your end, end of your rope. So that's like an, an asymmetrical couplet. Uh, and asymmetrical couplets don't want to rhyme and they didn't rhyme. So to your world burns and crashes to your at the end at the end of your rope. So those those two lines don't match um, stresses. So it's asymmetrical and they don't rhyme. So that's cool. Then then. He, she throws in a little inner rhyme there. Till you're standing in my shoes, I don't want to hear nothing from you, from you, from you, because you don't know, which rhymes with rope. So very cool. It's X, A, B, B, A. Very cool and very different little rhyme scheme, right? Love it, love it, love it. I love those little pop of the shoes and you, that little inner rhyme there. Really, again, sparkles with the rhyme and then boom you get the rhyme with rope no okay that's it okay we're done for the day and um uh, on friday we might take up uh we might take up the topic of uh the elements of a good story because hey that's what we're doing here is we're writing songs well songs are stories so we might talk about the elements of a good story and what we can use to tell a good story in a song all right so it might be story time, story lessons on Friday, all right? Hey, man, thank you. Thank you for being here, all right? I'm going gaga. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and I will see you Friday. Hey, till then, keep it on the double nickel. I'll see you on the flip-flop. Adios, amigos.